Honestly, no one even knows what's at the bottom of the well, so... What if it's like paradise? Not that I think that's true, but... This is how a government should be run. People get locked up, they don't get killed. If they commit a minor crime, they go to prison. And if they serve their sentence, maybe they can get to come out again and be okay. Live as a new person. Not what I was expecting. <gasps> Morning, crooked man. Oh God. He's got a sharp tongue. I thought it would be better for everyone if he parted with it. You're right. Thanks, Greenleaf. Work is work, I guess. Hey, Sheriff. Are you gonna come see the truck off? We're leaving for the farm in a few. Thought you might want to. I don't know. I'll be down in a minute. Okay. Great. This fucking line. <laughs> We're cutting line again. No one complaining, though. Oh, uh, Mr. Wolf, Flycatcher left his keys. Is everything okay? You look. I'm. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I have to take care of this. We'll talk later, okay? Good morning, Miss White. <sighs> You're late. <sighs> the rich people still get to go first? A little bit disappointed in that. Oh, Garland! Jesus! We only have like five minutes. They carry me for fuck's sake! I don't give a shit! You forgot these. Oh, thank you. It's uh, been pretty busy around here. Morning, Sheriff. Nice fucking day. Ugh. Shit! Just go grab that, would you? Sorry about all this. Uh, I tried to help. Just why the hell did she have to send me and me boy away, huh? You promised me I'll get another chance. But Miss White said I had to go up to the damn farm anyway. Why? I told her I had the money, but she didn't want to hear it. Come on, Colin. Oh. I'm walking, all right? Calm down. Wait, Sheriff Bigby. I have something. <laughs> you know, he was up crying all night, poor kid. Can you give this to Miss White, please? Dad says there's no time to say goodbye, so... <sighs> TJ... If you could bring it to her, she was nice. What is it? I couldn't take them all with me, and she said oh, she liked that one collection. the best. It's a willow beetle. That's a big one. They're cool, because when they're little, they have these pouches that squirt juice at you if you touch them. I'm sure she'll love it. She said it was pretty. That's everybody. What's it like at the farm? I've heard ogres live there, and, and they eat people in their sleep sometimes. God, I hope not. Do we have to go? I want to stay here. Well, we don't have a choice anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, TJ. But, uh, look on the bright side, okay? There's plenty of space to run around, uh, and a nice river nearby. This is sad. So you can swim all you want. Even in daytime? Yeah. You don't have to worry about the Monday seeing you. It'll be nice. <laughs> oh, why can't the government, oh, like, it won't be handle so glamours? Have you been there before? No. I'm, uh, some of the animals aren't comfortable around wolves. So you wouldn't know, would you? We're all set. Bye, Mr. Wolf. Goodbye, TJ. Hey, buddy.
I didn't want this man. I'm sorry, Colin. You got another one of those? How about a smoke for the road? One last time? Thanks, Bigby. Always a gentleman, aren't you, Bigby? I guess I'll see you around. Stay out of trouble, okay? If you even can. Yeah, see you around. Maybe sooner than you think. Oh, this is so depressing. Saying goodbye? Yeah. Hi. Hi. You're still wearing that thing. Oh. Just yeah. in case. I guess I am. It's not easy to forget. I know it seems like I should be able to. It's just... It's okay. I get it. Listen, I... I came here because I have to tell you something. What is it? It's about what happened to Faith and Lily. I'm not sure where to start. You lied. <laughs> Faith, Lily, and I, we had this plan. We we're gonna find a way out. Leave the pudding and pie for good. But then Faith decided to get some leverage. She stole a picture of Crane and Lily together. The minute Faith stole that photo, we had dirt on one of the crooked man's allies. If he found out, I... I had no choice. You have to understand. You've seen how they kept us quiet in that place. Can you imagine the lengths they go just to silence someone who had physical evidence? Marissa, what did you do? I'm scared to know. I freaked out, okay? I thought if I came clean to Georgie, he'd get the crooked man to leave us alone. We could just forget the whole thing. Maybe try again in a few years. You what? So I told him everything. And I begged for mercy for all of us. I didn't want anyone to die over a picture. You were just trying to protect them. It's hard to say. Yeah. Georgie promised he'd smooth things over with the crooked man. But then... Oh, God. <laughs> Yo, I don't have a cigarette. Oh, Here. I have another pack. Thank you. I don't know what happened. What? But that night at the club, Georgie came back and told me things had changed. He had to make an example of us. We had committed treason. And while the two of us were sitting there as he was telling me this, Faith walked in, and I had to watch while Georgie... Wait, so Georgie told you all this? Not the crooked man? Back at the well, you said... I know what I said. But it wasn't the truth, mm. was it? What does it matter? I know the crooked man did it. So what if it wasn't the whole truth? It was true enough. I guess... I guess it worked out in the end. Can't hold that against you. I know he ordered their deaths. I wasn't gonna let him get away with it because of a stupid technicality. Especially after. That night, after Faith, I tried to warn Lily, but she wasn't with her scheduled appointment. So I did the only thing I could do. I. I left Faith's head at your doorstep. You? I walked her over here, and I left her, just hoping that maybe if I couldn't save them... So, that piece of fabric I found near there, that was you? Yeah. I cut my leg trying to get over the fence. So you... you started all this? I just pointed you in the right direction. People like us get forgotten all the time. The crooked man was counting on that. When we suffer, 
We do it in silence. And the world likes it that way. We just... fade. Like we never existed. I couldn't watch that happen to Faith. Or Lily. Nobody cares about us. Not really. It's going to be different now. I promise. Things like that won't happen. I hope so. Not while I'm around. You'll make things right. You and Snow. I don't know. Seems like no matter what I do, it's just not enough for her or anyone. Snow's changing I just, just like can't Crane. Win with these people. I know it might feel that way, but they need you, Bigby. Both of you. You two make a good team. The way you look out for each other and look out for us. You don't see that a lot these days. I don't really know where we stand anymore. Things are just different. Huh. Things are always different. I don't know if Snow's changing to be like Crane or Look, what. Look, baby. After everything you've done for us, maybe they don't want to admit it, but without you, none of this would have happened. You listened when no one else would. You knew when to show mercy, and you brought justice to this town. Finally. Because you brought the crooked man in, everyone saw who he really was. So from where I'm standing, you did the right thing. You've been given this job for a reason. And I left Faith at your doorstep because I knew if anyone stood a chance against the crooked man, it was you. I hope I've at least done some good here. Thanks. That means a lot. You've changed this place. For better or worse, Fable Town wouldn't be the same without you. You're not as bad as everyone says you are. <sighs> That's what Faith said to me the first night. I need to tell you something. I have to tell you something. I feel like we've met before. You're trying to place me. You like my ribbon? Do you like it? Faith what? Faith one too. Would hide her beauty so she could escape his kingdom. They used to call me the Little Did Mermaid. Dr. Swinehart ever Oh my god. He said he wanted to run more tests. I hope you find what you're looking for. No, I need to know. I need to know. Oh, I'll see you around. Wolf. What? What was that? Nerissa is Faith? What? Whoa, this is. Oh. Okay, let's go through the choices first. What did you do to Georgie? Most people, a little bit of a majority, killed him. Mercy killing. Did you give the crooked man a, a trial? Most people did. That's how you start a government. How did you punish him? About half people chose to imprison him. The other half... No, there were three choices. One of them was rip his head off, and the other one was throw him down the well. So I would guess that this is the majority. It would be interesting if we could see the percentages for the other choices, but I guess we can't do that here. Did you accept TJ's gift for Snow? Who the hell- Oh my god, that 1.5% of jackasses, why would you not make a little kid happy even if it doesn't get to her hands? Jesus, just, just accept it, okay? What were your last words to Nerissa? You and 54% of players said, I hope I've done some good here. Yeah, I think, I can't remember what the other choices were, but that seemed to be the most optimistic one, and it's nice to end on an optimistic note, right? Yeah. Ooh, special stats. All right, let's see. Beast. We lied to him about seeing Beauty outside the apartment. Beauty, we promised that we wouldn't tell Beast, and we impressed her with our detective skills. Bluebeard. Bluebeard actually did jack shit. I thought he would be more involved, but he was just like red herring after red herring. You fought him after the interrogation. Butcher, you offered him protection at the business office. Colin, you gave him a drink when he asked for one in your apartment. You sent Colin to the farm. Was there a way for us to not send him to the farm? Like, I'm, I'm kind of upset that I gave Toad the money for the glamour and Snow still didn't let him stay. Like, why? Why? Oops. Crooked man. 
You took him back to the witching well, imprisoned him. D. You confiscated D's money while he was in custody. Faith gave her money, is she actually dead? Greenleaf, you offered her a job. God, this joystick. Gren, we drank with him after Lily Lily's funeral. Holly, we pretended to be the woodsman when she was passed out. Jack, made a deal with him, but reported him to Snow for burglary. Sorry, Jack. Nerissa, you gave her a cigarette during your final conversation. Oh, shit, we gave Faith a cigarette, too. My god. What does that mean? Snow, brought her along to the trip trap, promised to bring the crooked man back alive. Tim, tiny Tim, chose to wait for him. Toad stood up for him when Snow wanted to send him to the farm, gave him money, but he still had to go to the farm, so... That's some shit. Wow, that was a ride. That was... Oh. I really enjoyed that verbal battle by the wishing well when we were trying to convince the crowd that no, we were right, uh, Crooked Man was wrong, but then like, it kept going back and forth. That was just some excellent, excellent writing and... I could feel my head spinning really fast just trying to get both sides of it. Trying to make sure that we can win the crowd over but not be like an asshole and all this stuff. So that Phoenix Wright-ish scene was really enjoyable. Really enjoyed that. But regarding the ending, it's obvious that Fable Town, well, it's not a happy ending, I wouldn't say. Obviously, things are slow to change. At first, Snow and I we're supposed to revolutionize re revolutionize the town, but you could see that all the poor people were still standing outside waiting in line. They didn't give me shit though. Gren didn't give me shit, so maybe that's a good sign. Maybe they, res they respect me a little bit more now, but the overall feeling is the same. Bluebeard got to go first. The big bomb they dropped onto us at the very end though. What was that? I understand that Nerissa lied just to get the crooked man imprisoned or thrown down the well or whatever, but... Whoa, is she Faith? Did she play everyone? Who was that then? Like, who was the dead body then? Oh my god. My head is just like... <sighs> yeah. Not much else to say. Oh, continue the story with the Fable comics. Is that where we have to look? To find out what happens? Or like, why did Nerissa do all that shit? Or... Oh my god. Damn. Okay, before we really end it off, I guess we could just look at the Book of Fables again. Just to... I don't know, wrap it up. I don't know if there's gonna be a season 2. I've heard some rumors about it before, but nothing's confirmed. And I, especially since it said, hey, continue the story with the graphic novel, so maybe there isn't gonna be one. That's a huge cliffhanger, though. Vivian's story, The Girl with the Ribbon. Vivian was the very first to bear the curse of the purple ribbon. Removing the ribbon would result in death, and any attempt to talk about it was thwarted by the spell upon it. As time went on, she tried to live a normal life. Eventually, she married a nice man, but she but he was constantly wondering about the ribbon around her neck. Despite her pleas for him to leave it alone, one night while she was sleeping, he attempted to remove it. As he pulled on the edge of the string, Vivian woke and saw what her husband was doing. In a panic, she pulled away, preventing the ribbon's knot from being undone. Furious, she tried to express the severity of his actions, but her husband was una unable to understand. She realized that then she couldn't trust him and decided to leave. She lived alone for the rest of her days in the homelands, preferring the safety of isolation to the risk of another betrayal. God. Who placed that ribbon on her in the first place, though? Like, is that just part of her fable? Or was that the crooked man? They're putting in pie, Vivian and Georgie's place. Vivian and Georgie met during the exodus from the homelands, and they helped each other survive the long journey to the mundane world. Upon their arrival, however, they found it hard to make a decent living. With what little money they had, they opened a pudding and pie. Operating a strip club may not have been the most desirable occupation, but they figured it was better to be in charge of a place like this than to be forced through desperation to work at one. Winter Wolf Ooh, Bigby's mother, Winter. 
fell in love with a north wind and bore him seven wolf cubs. But he quickly grew tired of her and left winter. What? Heartbroken and Heartbroken and alone, she tried to care for her cubs despite her grief. She was especially fond of Bigby, but as the runt of the litter, he was often teased by his older brothers. After Winter's death, Bigby's siblings went in search of their father, but Bigby stayed behind to protect his mother's corpse from scavengers. Unfortunately, he was too small to defend her. From then on, he vowed to eat something bigger each day until he was large enough to confront his father and finally make him pay for the pain he caused his family. Oh, look at the big bad wolf. Bigby's true form is that of a giant 8 foot tall wolf. In addition to his iconic huff and puff power. Hey, is that why we smoke that brand of cigarettes? Cool. He has also inherited other abilities from his father, the North Wind. For example, Bigby is able to hold his breath for an abnormally long amount of time making it impossible for him to drown. Mary's loyalty Bloody Mary began working for the Crooked Man many centuries ago. He promised her freedom to do as she pleased, as long as she agreed to act as his personal bodyguard and hitman. Because of the Crooked Man's power and influence, Mary never had to worry about getting caught by the authorities. She enjoys her job immensely, and would defend the Crooked Man to the death, mostly because she finds it fun. Fabletown Justice when a criminal is captured in Fabletown, the traditional procedure is to hold a formal hearing in front of the community or concerned parties. However, exceptions are often made to expedite the process. In reality, there aren't any hard and fast rules for these types of situations, and the extent to which policies are upheld can depend on who is being charged. A new order. Hmm, not so sure about this. With Crane out of the picture, Mayor Cole has officially appointed Snow White as Director of Operations and Deputy Mayor in his absence. Many would say this promotion is a long time coming, since she was instrumental in the establishment of Fable Town and personally ensured that many fables made it to the new world safely. She's also been doing the work of Deputy Mayor unofficially for years, but now she has to deal with the bullshit too, the political stuff. Sheriff Bigby after fleeing the homelands, Bigby Wolf spent many years wandering through Europe. With a fable colony quickly developing in, new, in the New World, Snow White and Feathertop tracked down the wolf and offered him passage to Fable Town. He agreed, and Snow cut him with a lycanthropy-stained knife to give him the power to change into a human form at will. Bigby became sheriff of Fable Town under King Cole's administration, but because of his violent past, many fables didn't trust him and he was banned from ever setting foot on the farm. To this day, he struggles to redeem himself in the eyes of the community. Oh my god. Most of my thoughts on this episode, I did say it already. I really enjoyed the Phoenix, right? And the end just posed so many questions and uncertainty for Fable Town's future. Overall, though, I really enjoyed the series. You can say that Telltale's decisions, the decisions they let the players make in the game, they might not matter much in the end. If you were looking for it, I think you would have noticed that sometimes when we picked one decision, the other choice would end up coming up as well. So that's like a little narrative trick they use to make it seem like there's choices. But like I said in episode one, I don't really mind that. And I think the problem with Telltale games is that they market the game as being one where decisions matter. And you know, ultimately, no, it doesn't matter. But you know what? It does serve a purpose. It makes it so that the game is more immersive and you get more involved in the action and everything. Like all the action scenes, you gotta, you know, mash a button or quickly do something. And all the timed dialogue, that's to make it so you get more immersed and there's not much time to think, just like in real life, right? You wouldn't stand there and for like two hours trying to think of a response and think out all of the best choices while someone is waiting for your reply. So yeah, while I think that Telltale games certainly their decisions don't matter as much, the fact that there are decisions does enhance the game, so I'm totally okay with it. But yep, gonna try to see if there's a season 2, that would be really neat, but I think Telltale has a lot of projects going on right now with Minecraft, the story mode, all sorts of stuff, rapid expansion all around, so... Probably won't get to it until at least 2016, if there is going to be a sequel. 
I'm gonna stop rambling now. Really enjoyed this game. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. Uh, this is Wolf Among Us, and I'm Matter Wellens. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did. I'll see you all in another place in another time.